Right, it is time for reading challenge weekly wrap up because I guess that's how we're doing things these days. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here and to share with you how week three went for my May reading challenge of trying to read 2000 pages from the titles on my currently reading list. Now this is I'm doing this as a wrap up and then I will do my TBR picks separately. I know the videos this month have been sort of all over the place with vlogs and 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 the updates and then the TBRs and the I just I'm just trying to roll with it um, because it was different than I anticipated so I think it's better to do the wrap-up and the picks separately because I found I was rushing and I don't want to do that I want to share you know thoughts and then I want to share the excitement of the the picking of the of the videos picking of the books so we're gonna do it separately um, so I think each week has been a little bit different because why not? Anyway, so my main reading challenge is, as I said, to read 2,000 pages from the books on my currently reading list. I have two jars, fiction and nonfiction. Every week, week I pick five titles randomly, three fiction and two nonfiction. So we're going to see how this week went, and we're going to start by the least pages read to the most pages read. So first up with the least pages read, this is actually surprising to me, is There'll Be Peace When You Are Done. Um, Actors and fans celebrate the legacy of Supernatural, edited by Lynn S. Zubernis. And this is a collection, just as it said, from actors and fans on Supernatural and what it has meant with them, meant to them up to the lead, um, up to the finale of the show after its 15 seasons. Um, and so I read uh, 63 pages from this, and I have 52 left. 52 left. So I only have, where am I? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more stories or um, entries. I never know what to call these. It's a collection. They're, some of them are essay-like and some of them, they're kind of like blog posts in a way. Um, they're, they're thoughts, you know, and stories and people sharing uh, their experiences. So I keep on saying entries. Let me know if you know a good um, word for that because uh, I do tend to read collections and often collections are short stories but this isn't quite like that so um, I have enjoyed this the last one I read was by a Canadian actor and I, I oh no it wasn't but the last last one I read was by a Canadian actor who I actually never know how to say his name unfortunately um, he I won't say the character he played that's his name he played Halo on Battlestar Galactica, and I have loved him ever since, <laughs> um, you know, and uh, so it was really interesting to see his thoughts on the series, especially since he has been in another long-standing um, series that had a very huge fandom, and he actually talked about the difference of the fandom of BSG versus Supernatural, because BSG was sort of on the edge of social media, like, I don't, I don't know if Twitter was around then, I know... I watched a film podcast live streamed. They did a weekly one. David Chen did it. Um, he has his own YouTube channel now. It's really good. Uh, he did a really interesting video about doing one second every day for a year. I am off topic. Um, anyway, so I'm just trying to say like when, when BSG was out, the, the second one, not the 70s one, but the more recent one, it was really when social media was starting to happen, but I don't think a lot of it actually happened yet. I think that was also around the same time as maybe the Guild came out, because that was also new and different formatting for having a video, like a, like a, how would you describe the a web, a web series, I guess? It was a new thing. Um, and it wasn't even on YouTube. It was on different things in different seasons. And so it was a changing. So, and now there's social media. The social media is just, you know, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and everything. And Tumblr, Tumblr, I'm sure, is big with Supernatural because of the reposting function. I am just rambling. Anyway, so I enjoyed this. I'm very sad that I didn't finish it. But I guess it will be a really, hopefully, the next time I pick it, if I keep doing this, Indefinitely, which I'm not sure how if that's gonna happen. We'll have to talk about that um, uh, And uh, yeah, so but hopefully the next time this gets picked up. I will be able to finish it with seven stories Is that what I said seven? That's one a day I don't like to read too many of these in a row because I really like to let them sit with me a lot of them are very emotional and people have had really um, strong uh, personal experiences with the show and the people that they met and the how it helped them. Um, so, uh, so I I don't like to read story after story. I like to let it let it sink in. So that was the least 
pages read at 63 pages read with 52 pages left. Then at 64 pages read, so narrow narrow race here at the front, we have Njal Saga um, by Anonymous, the story of Burnt Njal, which is uh, an Icelandic saga. So I read 64 pages of this and I'm actually really quite impressed with that. I still have 350 left, so there's a lot to go. It is the longest of the Icelandic sagas. I am understanding it better now. I did decide to take some notes. I think I talked about that in my midweek check-in uh, video, um, and uh, and that helped. And also reading a number of the number of stories uh, or chapters um, that made sense together. Like if someone went adventuring and explored and went on and gathered people to go. Um, usually, you know, it's <laughs> pillage, um, you know, or um, or if there is a, I would I would finish the number of chapters that were on that type of thing, or if there was a family um, uh, connection, if there was a like a, a feud ish thing, then I would read till the end of that, or if someone ended up being interested in someone else, and then they eventually you know get married or something like that. So I would sort of read these mini arcs and that really helped it does mean it was slow going but i understood it better and i think like in the end that is worthwhile to go with that method than to just try and read as much as possible this is dry stuff and a lot of it is really like this person just said to this person and this person went to fight this person and this person like it's not you know always super you know beautiful and inspiring languages. It's about usually action or getting people to do stuff. And there is a fair amount of fighting or, or negotiating or traveling. Um, but I am enjoying it and it's sticking with me much more. And I did start to take some notes on some of the family members, which I think was helpful, but I'm not keeping it up. It's hard to do that. It's hard to stay committed to keeping it up, especially if I'm tired and I don't want to have to like sit up to write. So I sort of let it come and go and I guess I can also look up you know other people's uh, like summaries of chapters or whatever <laughs> if I need to so 64 pages of Nials and I have 350 pages left then with 65 pages so we had 63 64 65 so it was pretty pretty close race here um the Edgar Allan Poe collection um so I read two and a half stories <laughs> 65 pages read three 264 sorry, 235 pages left. I read The Gold Bug, which I had a complicated reaction to. I think I mentioned that in the wrap-up um, because of the depiction and of one of the characters in the language. Then I also read The Murders in the Rue Morgue, which 85% of the way through I remembered what the story, like what the resolve of the story was, so that kind of sucked. I've read, I think I read the Classics Illustrated Edition. <laughs> like a comic version. And currently I'm reading The Mystery of Mary Roger. I think it's Roger. Um, and I didn't make it all the way through. And that's going to come up in a little bit. But so, yeah. I'm not enjoying this as much as I thought. Um, the Rue Morgue story and the Mary Roger story are detective fiction. And they're three stories that are, follow this uh, person... Dupin, um, and uh, I don't think I like detective fiction. It's a very explaining. Apparently, the Rue Morgue one was the one that started the genre, but I don't know if that's true. I'm sure the mystery people are going, ah, 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 what about? And I'm like, but I, it keeps on like the on Goodreads with the Rue Morgue one. It says this started detective fiction, I think. So, um, but it's not really for me. The, the, this is very explaining. Like, there is like sort of a bunch of clues or a bunch of recollections. Um, or they call them disposes, like I guess it's like depositions, like people dispose their, 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 what they saw, what they heard, you know, and then we get the Dupin goes, well, blah, 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 and like tells us, and I'm like, it's a lot of just some, it feels, you know, like it's one of the reasons why I don't always like sort of like, um, Sherlock Holmes or or procedural TV you have someone telling you why they're so smart and figured it all out and I'm like <laughs> sometimes I don't respond well to that but you know it's just it's not one of my genres I always come back to it and I try it especially every March for March Mystery Madness but I have to find what my vein of um, it is and so it was a challenging read and also I found honestly I found this version really really hard um, like my eye would like I would have a hard time. I actually ended up using my bookmark eventually to do this 
and which was not physically all that comfortable, but it made such a difference. It really did. And um, so that felt like, I don't know, stuff like that I feel sensitive about. I'm like, I can't read well. I'm like, it doesn't matter if it helps. <laughs> then that's the part that matters, right? So it's just a tool to help you do the thing that you want to do. That's why I'm sharing it, even though I feel sensitive about it. Um, but it really did help because I found that my eye really, it's a really, they're wide pages and they're big blocks of text and there's not a lot of space in between paragraphs. So um, it helped and uh, I got there, but I didn't, I didn't, didn't get to all of them. So that one, 200 and 35 pages left and I read two and a half stories. I think I have 37 and a half stories in that collection. It's 41 overall and I had only read one. <laughs> All right, then I read more from Blood Magic by Nora Roberts. So this was a pick that I picked last week as well. So I'm really surprised that I've been reading it for two weeks and haven't finished it. I'm only at about 47%. That being said, I did read about 95 pages of it and I have 279 pages left, which is a bit of an estimation because of the whole overdrive page number thing um but um but and I could have read more from this today in, in fact I read about five pages and I realized oh it was going to be a really good scene and so I left it there so it would be a good place to come back to later who knows maybe I'll pick this three weeks in a row or maybe I'll continue to read it even if it isn't one of the five picks I'm not sure but um but yeah so this is paranormal romance urban fantasy about a set of cousins that have this sort of family lineage magic -y thing and there's a sort of curse situation um, that the or, or, or a big bad that the family is trying to generation after generation defeat and this is the third book in a trilogy so I am wondering what's gonna happen but you know because it's a romance you kind of know what's gonna happen so I'm really enjoying it I really like the couple in this one they have complicated history and they do have history so in a way it's a second chance romance um, and I love everything about it it's also set in Ireland so it's it's I just really, really enjoy it. And then I read the most from Go Ahead in the Rain um, Notes. Oh, it's hard to read it backwards. Sorry. Go Ahead in the Rain Notes to a Tribe Called Quest by Hanif Abdurakib. I absolutely love this. This one's nonfiction. Um, and I, I just, the author has such a great amazing way of sharing both the history and of the band and then it's also kind of like part memoir of like remembrances of like the songs and the albums at different times in his own life and the like and connecting the two and his love of music in general and the music for of the band of a tribal call quest is just is so present and full and complicated because there's some complicated stuff with the band and but held true to to that as well and just uh it was just wonderful it the a tribal call quest is a band that i loved and i um and this is an author that I am reading through all of their work after reading two of his uh, works of poetry last year, collections of poetry last year, and watching a Skillshare poetry class that he uh, did. I That's what started, that's how I found out about the author is the poetry class, and then I read the two collections, and I'm like, I just want to read everything, and then I saw he had a book on a tribe called Quest, I'm like, sign me up. So, yeah, I don't know how well, how much this would read to someone who is not a fan of a tribe called Quest, but um, if you have heard any of their songs or enjoyed any of their songs, you know, uh, like, or their music, um, but I, I don't know, I think my, it, it's because it's a love letter and sort of like a tribute, there is, I think some, a lot of, um, I think there is value, uh, even if you're not familiar. So anyway, I read 199 pages of this one and guess how many pages I have left. Zero! I actually finished a book. Oh my gosh, I've been doing this for three weeks now and I've only finished two books. Storm Cursed in the first week and now Go Ahead in the Rain. So I am so happy that I finished it. I finished it very early this morning. <laughs> I had one more chapter left and I was kind of saving it. Um, and so, yeah, so I read, finished one book and let's take a look at how many pages I got to. So here we go. Here is week three. So I, st I had some 
low days, 40, oops, 43, 67, 26, and I got to a total of 489 pages. So I didn't make 500. And this is the first week that has happened. Last week I got to 507, miraculously. I don't know how I did that. And the first week I got to 677. And I also have 93 pages from May 1st. So I'm in good standing overall. Like this week my average was actually 69.85. And I was going for 72. So to be honest, that's really, really close. And my average... Uh, per week, if I add up the three weeks, is still 554. So I'm still in good shape. And this is actually one of the reasons why I like to reset every week is so it gives me a new opportunity. I get to pick new books. I get to start to zero. I get a new goal of 500 pages and and I can just have a fresh start every week. So that is really, really working for me. I did also read a lot from Arusha and the Song of Death, End of Time, which is the one that we're reading. Song of Death, which is the second book in the Arusha series. I read, I think, over 200 pages of this. Yeah, 222 pages of this, and I didn't finish it. So this was a this is a buddy read with Izzy, Punk Art Girl, PA, and Kay Kelly. Hi, Kay Kelly! And um, we're reading this, and the live show will have already gone up when this video goes up. But um, yeah, so I need to... I actually haven't finished this. I really wanted to finish this for today. So I got to get another 144 pages in, in the next two days, or possibly just today. So this is a new element, so that might have pulled focus a little bit away from my regular books or from the five. Um, I, I knew that was going to happen and I'm actually glad that it happened sort of later in the month so that I could get in the rhythm of the regular books and um, or the five and uh, see how things go. I did read from a lot of the things a lot of the days. I'm shocked that I read from the Edgar Allan Poe almost every day. I didn't think that that was the case and some I didn't read starting which I mentioned in my wrap up or my, my check in that I had an event on Sunday, which is the beginning of my reading week. I had a birthday event for a family member on Zoom. So that was, you know, that was the important thing of the day. So reading was didn't happen as much. And that's fine. Birthday parties are fun. So yeah, so there we go. So that's how this week went. Uh, 11 pages shy of 500. I mean, like I'm a little bitter upset, <laughs> like a little, like I'm a little disappointed. But in the grand scheme of things, I think I'm doing fine. Um, I'm looking forward to what my new picks will be. And uh, it's a new week. Um, and there will be new books. And uh, that's an exciting thing. So there you go. There is my wrap up. Let me know if you like having the wrap up and the TBR separate. Um, it feels better to me. So that's probably how I'll continue if I continue to do this project in this way, which I don't know if I'm going to do. Um, that will be probably something to talk about in the next couple of videos and something I need to reflect on generally. But so far, I am actually quite um, happy with how the challenge is going, even though two finishes in three weeks is a little low, but that wasn't the goal. That wasn't the goal. So um, I'm doing pretty good if you look at what I was set out to do. And I'm feeling pretty good, which is important too. So there we go. That was week three. I will be back very soon with week four's picks. Thank you so much for watching.